welcome back with another video today we got egyptian mythology the essential ra horus osiris seth anubis that's that ain't that's the cat goddess that's that that's that see you in history it's on both screens without further ado let's get straight into the video Why is this on the screen? In the beginning, there was nothing. The universe consisted of a great chaotic ocean. Okay. And Ben Ben emerged amid this primal chaos. Ben Ben was a huge pyramidal mound. There was a lotus flower with Ben Ben, and this, when it blossomed, brought the god Ra to the world, and light came with him. Ra by himself generated the first generations of gods. Shu, the god of the air, and Tefnut, the goddess of rain, were born. The universe was enwrapped by a vast mass of primordial waters. Shu and Tefnut plunged into the waters to explore its immensity. Ra felt afflicted after realizing that their children were taking a long time to return. I hope you guys know this isn't a myth. I hope you know it isn't make-believe, it isn't metaphorical allegorical i hope you know that i mean you got people that's in the deep state of the government that walk with two arms and two legs for the most part they assume the they assume human form so they match your frequency and how you perceive it you will look at it as if you're looking at a person which you know a person to be of course but the reptilians itself they have a reptilian like here you have a reptilian brain if you look into that yourself but they have a reptilian head they got claws and what and not, but they stand up straight like a human. They can crouch as well, and they got smaller reptiles as well. And if you get into, isn't dinosaurs basically different reptiles, even though they extinct, I guess? Uh, but yeah, you have the rep reptilian part of your brain. And them people that assume form, them shape-shifting reptilians that will rep till the end. It's not that different, but even back then, how the flood or what happened because the people was creating abominations, centaurs and all that. That's just not somebody conjured that up and drew it. No, it was CRISPR-Cas9 before that. Genetic editing and tinkering with genetics. And these are real things that people actually seen. On top of you can't think of anything that doesn't already exist. The populace as a collective got an IQ of like a 40 as a collective. Terrible. And you think all of a sudden they somehow smart enough to draw or to say anything that doesn't already exist within the fabric of the universe, the universal library, the Akashic Records, the infinite domain? I think not, buddy. So this was an actual being with his arms in like human-like form for the most part with the head of a... One of them had a ibis, one had a cat. And then how you got smaller animals that was worshipped back in ancient Kemet as well. Like the cat, it's people that got like pretty much a human form, but a cat's head. As crazy as that may sound, the same. Giants, Anakim, Gilgamesh's, horn swoggles, mermaids, all that it exists as a real thing that's been seen, that's out on the outskirts, Narwhal, Antarctica. Even the mysteries are like Bermuda Triangle and all that. The ancestors was very intelligent. You think they'd just put some depictions of some senseless? No, they would put the most important. It would be keys to doors. Doors you don't see yet, though. The highest knowledge is unutterable, for it exists as an entity in lanes which transcends our material words or symbols. You even got plants here, like LSD or ayahuasca, some kind of psychedelic that'll put you on a trip. It's not the matter if you can't articulate verbiage to the person that's trying to understand what you experience. No, some things have to be experienced by the individual. That's God-like. That's God. Like how everything is God. Not even just in Egyptian mythology. Japanese mythology, it's a lot of truth to it all. It all may be true, but it's a lot of truth to it all as well. But let's continue. And fearing never seeing them again, he sent his best messenger to find them. Shu and Tefnut returned safe and sound, and Ra's joy was so immense that human beings were born from his tears. After returning, their children generated in turn Geb, the god of the earth, and Nut, 
the goddess of the sky, and thus the sky and the earth were created. The great god Ra sovereignly ruled the universe power, and he was awarded the title of the first pharaoh. The god gifted Egypt with several sacred animals like the ox and the lion, but his greatest offering... Look, she like the same color as me. Everyone waking up to it, too, that we're the chosen people and somebody out there that's claiming to be God's chosen people and to try to bury our identity. That's... That's very demonic to try to destroy someone's identity and call them African American, two different continents, but ain't nobody else, no other sect or race on the planet being called two different continents or black being void of color. That's insane. But yeah, look at look at the skin. Let's continue. Was the creation of the Nile River. Around its shores, men would edify a civilization glorifying the gods. But Ra had a premonition that his grandchildren would give birth to a new generation of gods who would put an end to his reign. And so the great god forbade the sky and the earth to have any offspring whatsoever. But Newt and Geb disobeyed and gave rise to a powerful offspring. Isis, Neph, Seth, and Osiris they dethroned Ra, and Osiris started to reign over the world. But the new god's throne was not safe, because his brother Jackal. Seth was eager to take all power Ivis. for himself. And so the saga of Egyptian gods began. Look at this. This is fucking phenomenal. No, guys. Like, when it comes to all we can do, for the most part, is think and be aware of the programming be aware of the programming and conscious of the programming that's installed in us that's instilled in us so we only see what we let me just think of something here it's hard to believe like okay you grow up you grow up in let's say an impoverished community or whatever you see boys in the hood you see how it's and you see it's real you experience it you you understand and then you try to look outside this box, this this small space of thinking you confined to, because you you don't know anything else. But when you get outside that box, it seemed far fetched that okay, you got boys in the hood. I know this random as fuck, but follow me here. If you ever seen the or Friday or whatever, you got these kind of incidents and people dying from bullets and straight bullets and all kind of crazy that were. And on the other side of life, that actually is and was a real thing. I mean, the past, present, and future is all happening simultaneously. They can prove that to you now. I've been knew it. I just ain't have no science to be able to conjure up logistics to present it to you. But I always knew. That's how you time travel, go through the wormhole. You either go forward or backward. I guess time, I mean, that don't really exist, but that's what we call it. It's, it's what give us our relevancy to prove that we even exist. If you keep going fast enough, you keep going fast, eventually that object will disappear at a particular speed and up but yeah it's hard to think like okay we got this kind of and then like the degeneracy we subjected to that we see from the tiktok videos and people being npcs it's hard to believe like bro this stupid this motherfucker slipping out here on banana peels and then you look outside of that and the note like this this is real these beings these were in helmets and other that even the I, ivis one the ivis hit like how it it's impossible for that to have been a helmet. Like these, these are real beings. There's people even have they love that say these things. So I'm like, when you learn what I've learned, it's like you get pieces to the puzzle. You get older, and then after that, the before you know it, you look up. It's like a whole puzzle that presents itself. And I've heard people in whatever dreams uh, they seeing people for the most part but got a lion's head but the rest of the body is human like i know it seemed far-fetched as hell I, I i get it trust me but it's it's crazy to think that these exist in the same i get it why people can be like yo i don't believe it i don't i get it though but let's continue Ain't no cu culture like this. This is like no other. Look at her. 
This is like no other. After this, I would say like Japanese mythology is very beautiful and dope too as well. But look at that. Look at that copper colored skin. You see that? That's me. I'll tell you, man. Yeah. Literally gold. After deposing the god Ra, the deity who gave origin to the Egyptian world, Osiris became the new god of the universe. The new supreme god took the goddess Isis as his wife and started a reign of great prosperity. Osiris brought civilization to men, who until that point lived quite primitively. The god taught them agriculture, weaving, and how to make bread. Besides that, he decreed the use of laws, which would give order to chaos. The Egyptian civilization began to flourish under the laws reign of the benevolent god Osiris. However, like Osiris had a powerful and ambitious brother, Seth. His kingdom stood in the arid desert around Egypt, and so he was jealous of his brother, Conduces. who had a fertile and prosperous kingdom. Osiris had an affair with Nephthys, Seth's wife, and Anubis, the god of the dead, emerged from this union. Anubis. Angered by his brother's betrayal, Seth prepared his revenge. The god of the dry lands and personification of evil invited Osiris for a great feast in his honor. During the feast, Seth gifted the guests with a beautiful coffin and said he would offer it to the one who fit into it perfectly. Osiris decided... That guy, what's that, um, ain't this Osiris if I'm not mistaken? His skin was actually green. That isn't, they just painted that, that color for no reason. So what was... Was he born that way or was it like a an Arroyo Borealis like event with gamma rays or something that made him that color? The color of nature, everything colorful. To try it and immediately after settling in, Seth closed the coffin, trapping the god. The evil god threw the coffin into the Nile, drowning the supreme god. Isis wept profoundly after losing her beloved husband, and these tears poured into the Nile River, giving rise to its traditional floods. The goddess and her sister Nephthys looked for Osiris's body, and Isis, after... No matter the day, age, or era, it's always a coward bully, someone imposing their will on someone else, doing something to someone else that you will be scared if it happened to you or you can't take the pain yourself. I don't... Conflict no matter the era. It only take one to be jealous, envious, jealous, envious. What's the other one? A bribe to threaten. Jealous, envious, a bribe to threaten. That's all it take. And a chain is as strong as the weakest link. It's been here before the 48 laws of power outshining the master and making someone feel a type way or whatever. You ain't even trying to. It's they just, I guess... For somebody to embody this low vibratory energy and somebody to embody, embody the love energy, I guess that creates a balance and they both necessary. You can't have one without the other. I don't know. Conflict no matter the era, though. It's a damn shame. They're finding it. Tried to hide it. But Seth spotted it nonetheless and smashed it into 42 pieces, spreading them throughout Egypt. Isis, with Anubis' Jealous. help, managed to recover the pieces and, under the guidance of the god of the dead, she mummified Osiris. Using her divine powers, the goddess was able to resurrect her love, but Osiris would now reign over the world of the dead. After coming back to life, Osiris had a son with Isis. His name was Horus, and he swore he would defeat Seth, the usurper of the throne that was his by right. I mean, you do become your name. Your name is a word. The smaller building blocks of that word, once more, is letters. And every letter converts into a number. And every number holds an energy. Seth, you just sound like some slithering motherfucker. To me, it's very fitting. No wonder. Let's continue. 
Seth, the god of... Let me show you how we do stuff around here. Actually, my department uses Monday.com, so I'm good. And work of destruction had murdered Osiris, the god who reigned supreme in Egyptian mythology. Set took the throne from his brother for himself and unleashed his reign of terror. Nevertheless, Terrible. Osiris had generated an heir together with the goddess Isis. His name was Horus. This was a falcon god whose prophecy said that he would reign over the skies and would bring the light back to Egypt, ending the darkness brought by Set. Horus, already an adult, decided to claim his throne, which had been usurped by his uncle. The contention is judged by the gods. While the court, presided over by the sun god Ra, decided who would be worthy to sit on the throne, a series of clashes between Set and Horus had begun. Set had Ra's sympathy, since the usurper protected the sun god from the serpent Apophis, while the latter Apophis. crossed the skies. Set proposed a challenge to Horus. Both would have to transform themselves into hippos and should be submerged for three months. Horus relied on his mother, the goddess Isis, to take advantage of Set's vulnerability to kill him. The goddess felt sympathy for Set and could not kill him. This betrayal enraged Horus, who then attacked his mother cutting off her head. The god Toth, the deity of knowledge, saved the goddess, replacing the- What the f- I didn't know that part. They had their, their key of the heir to the throne. And I guess they install this programming in his head that this is the enemy, this will do this to your father, and we have to get rid of him. When time came, she couldn't do it because he's still part of the family and she still have whatever, and he felt betrayed. That's like something I've seen in an anime or a movie or something. What the fuck? the severed head with a cow's head. The clash between Set and Horus continued for many years. When fighting in the desert, Set managed to pluck Horus's eyes. Due to Hathor's help, the goddess of love, Horus had his vision restored. The court of gods demanded a reconciliation between Set and Horus. The evil god, pretending to be benevolent, invited Horus for a feast in his palace. During the night, Set tried to abuse his nephew making him unworthy to the throne. However, Horus managed to defend himself and prevented the god's poisonous seed. Horus decided to take revenge and, with the help of the goddess Isis, the god placed his divine seed in lettuce leaves, which were then offered to Set by the goddess Isis. The god of barren deserts ate the contaminated lettuce. Poisoned, Set started to deteriorate in front of everyone and a golden disc emerged in his forehead. Thoth grabbed the bright disc and ingrained it in her own head. Seth had been humiliated, and that was when, after 80 years, the court granted Horus the throne that was his by right. Isis couldn't be more proud to see her son, with Osiris assuming the father's throne. Seth's fate was to travel with Ra, the sun god of the skies and his enraged screams could be heard with thunder. And so, Horus's reign over Egypt began, and all the pharaohs who one day reigned over Egypt were among his descendants. Ra is the sun god in Egyptian mythology. This god is usually depicted as a being with a man's body and a head of a falcon. The sun disk is over his head. He had been one day the greatest of all gods, but time wore him down and, finding himself too old, he decided to relinquish the power and go to the skies. This god is one of the most revered figures in Egyptian mythology. As the sun god, one of his duties was to drive away the darkness, and to accomplish his work, the god crossed the skies on his sunboat, lighting the whole world. But when the twilight came, he and his vessel plunged into the sea waters towards the underworld. There he would have to sail through the dark world and cross the twelve gates, which would be the twelve regions of the netherworld. Ra took an hour to go through each gate. 
Osiris was in one of them, the lord of the underworld, whom Ra always visited to pay his respects. But before leaving the underworld's darkness, the god was attacked by the terrible snake Apophis. This force of chaos tried to destroy the god's vessel, and each day the serpent seemed closer to accomplish her desire. Apophis once managed to swallow the sunboat, putting an end to the sunlight in the morning. But the serpent failed to hold the god in her stomach and regurgitated him. This event was marked as a solar eclipse. However, destroying Ra's boat became more difficult, since Set, the god of destruction, after losing the dispute of the supreme throne for Horus, had been condemned to navigate with Ra across the skies. He helped the sun god, defending his vessel against the terrible serpent, defeating it several times, making Ra's underworld journey safer. The god Ra was a figure worshipped throughout Egypt, but this god was especially adored in the city of Heliopolis. The god's prestige was so vast that other traditions of Egyptian religions of antiquity merged the god's depiction along with the greatest figure of their own pantheons. For instance, the figures of the supreme gods Amun and Atum were also known as Amun-Ra and Atum-Ra. The god's name was used by many pharaohs. Ram they ain't look nothing like this. Zeus is a well-known example. His name means son of Ra, or the son of sun, and so the pharaoh would strengthen his divinity before his subjects. Looked like the guy from the mummy return and shit. Anubis, the god with a jackal head, is a deity of the Egyptian mythology connected to life after death. The god is one of the most ancient Egyptian deities, and therefore his role changed as the centuries went by. Anubis was already considered the main deity linked to death and the underworld's god, but this role was transferred to the god Osiris. The jackal god was also considered the god of embalming and mummifications. In funeral rites, it was common to see a priest wearing a jackal mask during the mummification process. The god was also considered as the protector of tombs and cemeteries, therefore protecting the bodies of those who went to the underworld. Anubis is the son of the goddess Nephthys, wife of Set. But his son was not born of the union with her husband, since Nephthys had been disguised as the goddess Isis, and so she mingled with Osiris. Set, coming to terms with that act of disloyalty, plotted against Osiris, killing him and scattering his body parts throughout Egypt. After Isis gathered all the parts, Anubis helped the goddess during the god's funeral ritual. So Anubis transformed the body of Osiris into the first mummy. Anubis became the deity that led the spirit of the dead to the underworld, where the dead would be judged by a court presided over by Anubis. The god placed the deceased's heart in Osiris's scale and the feather of truth on the other side. If the heart was heavier than the feather, it indicated that it was full of wickedness. He was then delivered to Amit, a demonic creature known as the Heart Devourer. If the feather was heavier than the light heart of the soul of the righteous and good, Anubis would take the person to Osiris, and the deceased stepped into life after- Look at this, how can this possibly be a mask? Some of these figures was giants, man. After death. The Blue Lotus. In the period of Greek rule over Egypt, the god Anubis was associated with Hermes, which in Greek mythology is also a deity that led souls to the underworld. This association gave rise to a deity called Hermanubis, which became popular during the period of Roman rule. Anubis is certainly one of the most popular divinities in Egyptian mythology, the god accountable to lead souls to the afterlife. Here's how I got automated transcripts and summaries for every lecture I attend. It's called Otter AI and it's- Bastet is the cat goddess in Egyptian mythology, depicted as having a woman's body with a cat's head. The Egyptians devoted great honors to cats. They were considered sacred animals. 
The felines had a meaningful role in the Egyptian world since, thanks to them, their food was safe from rodent infestations. Also, cats could scare treacherous, poisonous snakes. Bastet is a goddess associated with the sun, and because of that, the goddess followed Ra during the day in his solar boat, crossing through the skies. At night, the goddess turned into a cat, Cats are and ancient. attentive, the goddess protected the world against the dreadful serpent Apophis. The goddess was worshipped throughout Egypt. Doing harm to any cat was a... See, it don't... For the guys, for the ones out there that know, like the reptilians that stand up straight, that can assume human form, they have, like, smaller versions of them, like lizards, and it's like the same thing. If you got, like, the human body and the cat's head, and then you got the actual cats, too, like, it all makes sense to me. I know it sounds crazy if we thinking in this box, this construct we've been confined to or whatever, but really think about it. All the things you ever heard and you seen or whatever, just put it together. It's like it, it paint the it paints itself it all makes sense to me terrible sacrilege the author of such a violent act could be punished with death cats were seen as family members and according to some reports whenever a house was set ablaze the cats entered the burning house to help their residents escape the fire sometimes these cats appeared to be dead in the flames but they returned to life thanks to the goddess Bastet emphasizing the popular saying of a nine-life cat. For being sacred animals, cats were mummified, and Egypt has cemeteries dedicated to these animal mummies. According to some versions, the goddess Bastet is linked to Sekhmet, the lion goddess. This goddess was violent and bloodthirsty, but was tamed, becoming a gentle and milk-drinking cat goddess. In other versions, Bastet and Sekhmet were sisters, and Ra's daughters. Any of y'all ever play Gauntlet on the Nintendo 64? And they had like archers that was, um, but they had the, the cat head in the human form. And with the, um, the ones that got the knives, that throw the knives had the, some kind of bird's head or whatever. And that's one of my favorite games of all time growing up too. Near and dear, like, yeah. Let's continue. I was gonna get into some whole other shit. I ain't even gonna know what I'm talking about, possibly. Like. Even after the end of the worship of the Egyptian gods, cats, to this day, continue to look men up and down, hoping to have their deity acknowledged again. Yo. I rock with this video, it's very entertaining. I think I'm gonna get into it all, like just do like a whole other uh, series and get into all mythologies. So next, more than likely, is gonna be Japanese mythology. And then I'm gonna go s keep going after that, but. <sighs> Let me know if you think this stuff fake. Let me know if you think people just drew this and created it and why. Let me know if you think mermaids and sirens and unicorns and all that is mystical and fake and centaurs and very small people like it's people that's look human but they're very small and then you have ones that's very big and you're very small to them being a giant so whatever um shit very interesting can make for a lot of creativity and whatever facet of field of arts you work in you can take the smallest thing and make a whole project surrounding just one thing like if your creativity like that i see infinite in the smallest things so imagine what i see in a thing that actually is the stature or size of a it's interesting though it's intriguing see they my complexion gold that's it for this video man don't forget to like the video if you like the video comment share subscribe turn on post notifications dm me the link via x Formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. I'll see y'all in the next video, man. I'm out.